Hello and welcome to another video. Um, in this video, we'll be looking at the MetaHuman Creator. So at the time of making this video, this is early access, so things may change. Uh, the performance of this also will very much vary depending on your internet connection and machine. Uh, I've tried recording this earlier on uh, an RTX machine upstairs. However, the footage was not quite how I wanted it and the internet connection was, let's just say, less than desirable. So I'm trying to record this again on a 980 Ti, so it won't look quite as smooth and as beautiful as MetaHuman can produce. Uh, but for those who don't know, MetaHuman is a tool to allow you to create a virtual photo real human beings uh, for the Unreal Engine. So this could be Unreal Engine applications such as games or virtual production, simulations, etc. And basically it is a web driven tool at the moment. I kind of hope it becomes a separate tool and not driven by the internet um, or Chrome or anything just because as you'll probably discover and probably see in this video itself, uh, it very much depends on how good your machine and internet is and it'd be better if it's a dedicated tool, but anyway. Uh, I can't give too much information about MetaHuman because not all it's been revealed at the time of making this video. Uh, all I can say is at the moment it's early access, it connects to Unreal and it has to use Bridge to then connect to Unreal and I'll kind of go through the process. So I'm going to have a go at creating something that I think is close to myself, probably won't be perfect. And I've got, first off, I've got to choose a MetaHuman preset to build upon. So I'm going to have a quick look through the presets and see what's the closest structurally to myself. I had a go at this earlier um, and the results weren't perfect. So I'm, again, I'm just trying to find something that's got some similarities. And I think the closest I found last time was this one, so a toy, so I'm going to try that again. Uh, the ones that have a little explanation mark, a little uh, warning symbol, uh, basically the only ones that have got level detail 0 and 1. Now, those who don't know what level detail it is, the level detail is the further away you, the camera moves from a object or um, in a 3D space, for example, if we was in a game engine, the lower the resolution of it is to try and compensate and optimise it. So this character at the moment is not optimised. So I'm just going to click Next to start editing this human. And hopefully, there we go. So, at any moment, this could resolution could drop. So again, that's based on our internet connection, so forgive me on that. We have a nice little hotkey reference, which kind of makes things easier. But as you can see, we have this preview of our meta-human, our virtual doppelganger. Now, these doppelgangers can work with um, the NV link. So if you have a um, Apple device with a, like the new iPhone or an iPad Pro that has the face scanning feature, the ability to track your facial features, you can actually use your facial animations and movements and record that into Unreal onto the virtual human. So I'm just going to go through some of the tools as if you've never seen this before. So first off we have is our blend mode. So what the blend tool is, is essentially it allows you to combine together presets or facial features of presets to create a truly unique human. So this would be great, for example, if you was wanting to create crowds or random characters in your cinematic piece. I could select a variety of different people. So let's say um, Cooper's got a quite a strong jawline um, and I could also blend features from doesn't have to again you can have male and female blending together so let's say we blend together some features from, the, uh, from Lexi and I can have although it shows you free here we can have more um, but I'm just going to stick with these two for now and what I can do is that I can then select a part wherever these little circles are click and Oh, I need one more, so it does need three. Uh, let's just use Krista. There we go. So I can click on one of these features here. It brings up this radial circle. And then I simply drag my circle to one of these three locations. So this would be Lexi, uh, Cooper, and uh, Kristoff, I think it is. So you can see how the face its structure is changing to match the closest facial structure of those characters. 
uh, using a blend tool. So using that, we can create truly unique faces, although we can actually manually pull and stretch things, which is what I'm going to do. Uh, a few other tools we can look at is the clay material. So this is, if you're used to sculpting anything, um, you'll find that having this grey option allows you to have this clear clarity of detail where I can kind of see the pores, the, how much things are stretching, how the face structure is being changed, because it's a little bit hard to uh, see that when you've got this kind of diffused uh, skin texture applied to it. It's a lot easier if you just have it kind of a clay overlay. Uh, another thing we can do is we can turn the hair off. So again, for those who are used to sculpting in things like ZBrush, or um, not a larger ZBrush to be honest, uh, you can kind of use this as a kind of way of modifying things. Uh, but I'll just, just toggle those both back on for now. Uh, next up in our options we have is our skin type. Oh, uh, actually just quickly, uh, up here you can select your environment, so you can have studio, indoor, outdoor and silhouette and this is basically these are just kind of lighting environments to kind of s show you how the skin the reflections the diffusion happens essentially auto is just how we switch our camera mode so we can go to face body torso legs etc but i'm just going to focus on the face for this video and render quality i'm going to keep this on medium because i'm running on a gtx 980 but if i was running this on the rtx cards I could have this on ray traced. In fact, if I try it now, we'll see what happens. It's working okay at the moment, uh, but I am going to keep it on medium just to be on the safe side in case it uh, starts to kill my bandwidth, to be honest. Uh, level detail. So, because this character is once in development, there's only two level details that actually um, are fully fleshed out. If I was to go to level detail two onwards, uh, although the face structure is largely the same, uh, when I was to put, if I was to put this into Unreal, the uh, level detail wouldn't work as you'd expect it to. We don't have this middle ground between hair, no hair. It actually, the hair would become a um, kind of billboard, a kind of flat 2D image almost. It's um, again, I'll link a description down from documentation on uh, that kind of explains this in greater detail from Unreal. But essentially. This kind of quality level detail 0 and 1, is you're looking at your PS5s, you're looking at your high-end computers. Your level detail 2, 3 and 4, you're looking at PS4, PS3 kind of thing. And then as you get down lower and lower, you're getting towards your mobile phone territory of quality, essentially. Okay, so I'm going to adjust the skin so I can... My skin colour is not quite that red, it's a little bit on the paler side. I'm quite... I'm a very lot red on the camera here, I'm actually... When I'm outside, I look quite ghostly. And just the U and V, so there's the uh, two coordinates, just the contrast, and I can even adjust the roughness of my skin. Freckles, so do I have any freckles or not? I don't, so I'm not going to do that, but I can adjust the density, the strength of those accents. So this is uh, redness, so wherever I have like red patches on my skin, uh, I do tend to get fairly quite reddish nose I suppose. So let's make that a little bit redder. My cheeks can be a little bit on the red side as well. Um, yeah that'll be fine I think for the for that. Eyes, so this is again obviously the eyes so preset so I'm going to choose this sort of greyish colour because if I look at my eyes they are kind of grey greeny hint I suppose that kind of in between colour. And I'm going to adjust my irises, so I can even choose the iris style. So let's just zoom in on one of the eyes. So this is the kind of, um, oh, it focused, the kind of, as you can see, the ring. So I can choose different ones. I think that's closer to what mine is. So I, uh, I can adjust the iris scale. So I have quite big uh, pupils, actually. It has been something that's been commented on in the past a couple of times, actually. Uh, I can even adjust the um, iris colour, so this is the kind of shade of the eyes, so my eyes are kind of greyish. Uh, quite grey indeed. Uh, towards the uh, brownish side, I suppose. Looks a bit too green, that is. Let's uh, pull that back a bit, put a bit of blue back in there. 
we can adjust the white so you can see my eyes are quite bloodshot kind of this whitish color so i'll do an off white you don't ever want to make them purely white because nobody's um scalias or, or scalias or whatever to pronounce them are actually purely white and just how much veins are there or how little veins there are i have quite veiny eyes teeth so this one for me is um I don't have good teeth, to be honest with you, so you can just think like the tooth length. So I have quite short teeth because my teeth are quite worn away. Just the variations of my teeth are a little bit um, on the crooked side, I suppose, a little bit worn. It's quite close. I don't have very good teeth. Um, if anybody who knows me would know that. And just the spacing of my teeth, so I have quite a bit gappy teeth. It's just just a variation, a little bit, not quite that level. There we go. And I can just how much plaque there is, so I have fairly decent amount of plaque. I do get them scraped quite often, but obviously because of the C word, the uh, current climate, I suppose, uh, that hasn't happened as much as it well, not normally would. Let's open the jaw just so we can get back a look. So you can see that it doesn't actually render the entire inside of the mouth, only just this front part here. And again, mainly like game engines and the typical use case of these, you wouldn't need that level of information in there. Makeup. Now, I don't wear makeup, but again, you've got options there for the eyes and lips. Hair. So this is where I find it a little bit limited. Uh, my hair, as you can see, is quite draggled, covers my forehead a lot. Um, but there isn't really anything that's available that's got that kind of options that I have so the closest I have is actually keeping it with the one it kind of comes with which is not ideal uh, I do have slightly lighter brown hair than what is there so it's about there I should say and I'll reduce the salt and pepper because I don't have any greys at this point in time I can adjust the roughness so my hair tends to be quite greasy and shiny so it's about probably that region where it's got a bit of a shine to it and like I said if I could get a hair where I could pull this down and my hair is quite flat to my head it's quite thinning at this point uh, I would but I don't have those options eyebrows so my eyebrows are quite thick here but thinning at the edges so the closest I found would probably be one of these medium ones quite messy and again, I can just the colour and the, the kind of salt and pepper or the greyness that's in there. Eyelashes, I'm keeping on default. Beard, uh, I don't really have a beard. I have a moustache at the moment, but that will be shaved. So I'm not going to actually include that. And I do have a bit of stubble down here. I never can grow anything to the sides. So I'm just going to remove that. Uh, I'm going to keep the stubble on this moustache at the moment, so the stubble moustache, but that would be shaved typically. Body, so this is where I choose my body type, so zoom out. I have a kind of oh, quite thin, tallish body. Head looks quite large there, um, it's quite concerning. So quite tall, quite thin, I don't have any real muscular definition. Uh, I can choose a top and bottom. Choose. I'm going to leave those as are. I'm not going to go through those, but I can, as you can see, got a few options. I can choose the colours, etc. But now we're actually going to get into the kind of the actual meat of the metahuman tool, which is the ability to sculpt and move our facial features around and create somebody unique. So with the move tool, when I've got it selected, I can click on any of these white lines and I can move those limbs around. And what that does is it moves the entire area or the entire object. So if I was to let's say move, select the eyebrow, that moves the eyebrows but also moves this forehead so everything is sort of linked together. Likewise with the nose. So my nose is slightly pointed up. Um, but I don't, also because I broke it as a kid it's slightly slanted slightly and slightly a bit, um, it's got like a ridge here. And I'll get into that when I actually use the sculpt tool because I can't actually do that with a move. Um, but yeah, the sort of move tool is a kind of 
general purpose moving everything for the object together in one go, essentially. If I want more finesse, more control, I go into the sculpt option. Down here at the bottom, you can also see we've got the option for symmetry and the sort of sculpting plane. I'm just going to keep everything as is there. I'm going to keep it symmetrical, although the human face actually isn't perfectly symmetrical. So I'm going to increase the width of my nose there and try and bring out this bit here. I'm going to pull my tip back in. because My nose tip actually didn't stick out that far. So this bit's quite got a bit of a lump to it. And my nostrils are quite, I'd say they're quite large, quite mediumly extended. My eyes, I wish I could add like wrinkles and bags under here, but I can't find a way of doing that at the moment, are kind of, so I'm going to kind of keep, every so often I'll stop talking, I'm just going to focus on the screen a little bit. Probably as close as I'm going to get, to be honest. My ears, which you can barely ever see, they're quite pinned back. They go back more than they go forwards. So that's about right, but I'd say they're probably a bit on the uh, smaller side. And more back. Like that. I think, other than the hair, which I wish I could get a more disheveled look to it, I would. Um, I think that's as close as I'm probably going to get to myself with this, I'm afraid. So you can see, fairly quickly, we can build a, a person. Um, in fact, I'm just going to turn the symmetry off for a second and just see if I can pull one side of my nose in a little bit, just to try and create that kind of bit of a um, twist I have in my nose, if I can. There's my chin. What's my chin like? It's not too far off actually, but I don't have a very strong jawline. So I'm going to go back to move and you know, sculpt and see if I can pull my jawline in a little bit. There you go. I mean, that's as close as I'm going to get to myself. Again, it's not perfect. Uh, there are some people who have managed to use this tool and create perfect carbon doubles for themselves, which is amazing. Um, so you can see, I can preview it here. Like I said, I could change the clothes. There isn't, there isn't a lot of clothes options. It's largely just jeans and a sort of shirt, I suppose. I can just the colours of that shirt. Um, I'll make it a bit like a kind of have a kind of greyish blue I suppose I'm wearing like that yeah <laughs> that's as close as I think I can get there shoes uh, I typically wear sneakers if I can but um, and jeans I have yep quite slim jeans on typically and again I kind of wish I could adjust the clothes so again I think I think I'd have to take this model into a no program like um, Cinema 4D, Blender, Sculptress, ZBrush, whatever, um, whatever program basically that allows me to uh, modify it. Um, and then using something like Substance Painter, I would then be able to paint and define features more than what are currently available in here. So once I'm happy with everything, it automatically saves. So everything I'm doing is actually being saved onto the MetaHuman Creator website. I'm already logged into my Epic account on this, so this is already linked to my Epic. So I need the uh, Quicksilver Bridge application signed into Epic um, on Epic itself, so the Unreal Engine, and then the MetaHuman all using the same Unreal login. If I go to my MetaHumans, so you'll see I've already created a few, played about a few earlier. You can see here my characters here. So I've tried using eToy twice before to make something similar. This is probably closer than that one. That looks a little bit golem-like. Um, so with that character created, 
I could, for example, edit it, duplicate it, delete it on here. But what I need to do is I need to, with the Quicksort Bridge application, so you may not um, have used this before, if you, um, especially if you've not used Unreal before, but Quicksort Bridge is a application that allows you to bridge the gap between things like Substance Painter, Mega Scans, and um, obviously now MetaHumans into Unreal Engine. So again, I've already signed into here. So if I go to MetaHumans, you can see here's all the prefabs. I could download any of these. So let's say I wanted to download Payton, I could select Payton, choose my resolution. So whether it's 8K, um, some of them also have the option for 2K and 1K. I can go to the little gear here, so I can adjust my download settings. So whether it includes the Albio, the metal roughness, specular, diffuse, gloss, all those good stuff. I can even adjust the model type. So by default, MetaHumans are downloaded as a U asset, so an Unreal asset. But I could also download it as a source asset, so that would be the MetaHuman source file, or the, metal, the source file plus the Unreal asset. You can even download the ZBrush tool for this, MetaHuman brushes, etc., etc. Again, some of those may be enabled, some of those may not. I've not had enough chance to play back with it yet. Export settings, this is where I would choose where it saves it and what engine use, version I'm using. So I've already using 4.26 of Unreal, which I believe is what you require. Textures, format, file names, etc. Again, all very uh, standard stuff. So let's go to my MetaHumans. And then select my, well, human, I suppose. I choose my resolution, so 1K, 2K, or 8K. Now, I would recommend, obviously, downloading the character, the model, as highest quality you can, depending on what your machine can handle. Now, I won't be able to show you, in this video, this model running in Unreal. Uh, I'll have to show you that in a follow-up video. Um, because basically the machine I'm running this on won't be able to handle it. But what I'll do is I can take that 3D model, that 3D scan, that virtual self, plug it into Unreal. I can then apply animation files to it, so whether that is motion capture or a rigged model, so I can actually animate within Unreal, and we'll potentially look at that too. I can also use, like I said earlier, the Live Link application on a iOS device and capture facial features and have all that animated. So the good thing about these MetaHumans are they're already rigged, they're already fully capable of being motion captured and moved and tweaked around, etc. Um, but there are a few little things we need to bear in mind. You do need to have Unreal, you do need to have several plugins installed. The process isn't super friendly at the moment. And again, I will link the kind of documentation in the description down below, so you can quickly see it on screen here. You can kind of see this is a for a document that kind of talks about the MetaHuman process, how it all begins, how to implement it, all that stuff. I'm not going to go for all that because Unreal has already covered it. And there we go, that is MetaHuman, my first impressions. Uh, I see this tool having a kind of great wide adoption, especially for virtual production, for these um, sort of CG films, the VFX pipeline. This is amazing. You have to necessarily keep building background characters all the time or presenting characters. It does remove that need of uh, heavy duty modeling necessarily. Again, if you want something truly bespoke, you're still going to have to do the work. But if you want photo real people quite quickly, MetaHuman's probably the way forward or something similar. Uh, a few things I would like to see is I'd like to see the application be not on a website. I'd like to be an actual dedicated application so it wouldn't um, kill your machines as much, especially if you're running a Chrome browser like I tend to do. Uh, I'd also like to kind of see more options, more implementation. I'd like to see, I'd also like to actually know what the kind of strategy is pricing for this, because at the moment of making this video, I don't know how this is going to be done, whether this is going to be, I imagine this is going to be a subscription service, but I don't know if that subscription service is one that's going to be included in some form of unreal substance Meta human subscription package, or it's going to be a separate package. Um, whether it's a, there's an option to even just buy it, or whether it's free, I don't know. So I can't really even answer that at this point in time. If anybody really knows, please comment in the, script, in the um, comment box down below if you have any more information on that, because I don't really know at the time I'm making this video. And I'd love to know, because I'd like to actually be able to utilise this uh, going forward, especially in an education sense. So imagine actually having 
a 3D scanned environment of a historic site and you're having a metahuman guiding you through this space and people in VR headsets following this virtual human through the space and the, the kind of workflow, the speeding up of process of capture, animate and go is just, it's just there, it's just you know, needed. The biggest time consuming thing is one, it's been the modeling and then two, the rigging and animation. This kind of takes some of that legwork off you, but only if you're after a photo real person. Although I suppose you could take the model, deform it slightly, add some filters to it to stylize it to make it less photo real. I don't know exactly. Again, there's certain terms and conditions with the use of this. So, for example, you can't use this for um, at the moment for commercial work because of early access. Uh, also, you can't use this for machine driven learning or for other programs. It has to be implemented into Unreal. Um, but other than that, I see this kind of tool, this kind of speeding up of the workflow being only an advantage uh, in the long term. So you know, let me know what you think. Remember to like, comment and subscribe and I will see you again soon and I will try and get a follow up to this done as soon as possible. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.